So now that we've determined we're going to be using a linked list to implement our stack, let's move on to the code. But before we actually write any code, it's good practice to design our code. And to design the code, we need to look at the prototypes of, of the functions we're going to be implementing. And in, in terms of the, the stack, the functions we're going to be implementing are very clear. You just have to look at the definition of this abstract data type. First, you have a push operation, which is the equivalent of adding elements to the stack. So the user will, will be given a, a push function that they could use to add elements to their stack. They will be given a pop function to retrieve elements from their stack. And also, to make it a complete interface, so these two functions are actually sufficient for us to implement a stack. But to make it a complete interface, we're going to be adding two functions. One is create stack, and the other one is delete stack. So what the user will have to do, effectively, is first create a stack, so just call this function, and then push elements into the stack, remove elements, pop elements, and then push again, Whatever, do whatever you want with these two. And then in the end, once you're done with your stack, you deallocate the memory that you've used for your stack. So these are the four functions that we're going to be um, writing in code. So it's good practice, like we said, to actually define these functions, define their prototypes, define exactly how they operate, what kind of arguments are, are they going to take in, and what kind of uh, uh, data types are they going to return. So this is exactly what we're going to do now. So in terms of the uh, push operation, now before we actually look at their prototypes, a linked list in C is implemented um, so each element of the list is basically a structure. And in C, we have to define the structure. We have to define what this element will consist of. And we use a struct. And this is how we basically define our struct here. So we're going to use type def. So this is exactly the code. I'm giving you the code right here. Type def struct. And then we're going to call it element, or node, or whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to call it element. And then open curly braces and then here we close them and then we're going to define whatever they're going to take whatever the struct is going to contain and we said that every node in the list will contain two things if you remember we said it's going to contain a pointer to the next element in the list and it will also contain the data which is what we're trying to store so this is the most important part but of course we need to keep this overhead the pointer so that we could have a complete uh, list so and the first thing you want to define is your next your pointer to the next element. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to put struct element and then you're going to say next. So what this effectively does is it tells us that we have a pointer called next to a structure element which is right here which we're defining at this moment. So this is our pointer to the next element in the list. And then what we're going to have is, of course, the data itself. And you could have data of any type. In this case, for a particular example, we're going to put our data to be of type int. And we're going to say we have a pointer to that data. So this is going to be, the data is going to be a pointer to an int, an integer. And this will be our data. So this is the most important part, and this is what we have to add in order to be able to have this linked list. So this, this collection of elements that are linked one to the other via pointers. So this is basically defining the element itself. Now that we have this element defined, now we could move on to defining the prototypes of each function. And then the next step will be to actually write the code for each function once we have the prototypes. So we'll do the prototypes in the next video.